is, of course, Dr. Andy Kaufman. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ryan. I'm sure a lot of people out there are already very familiar with, with your background, your work. Um, you know, there's, you've done a lot of different interviews. So today, I really want to try to get to the, the crux, the core of, of what it is that you see around all of this in a way that's very easily digestible for a lot of people out there. Because as you know, this stuff can be very confusing, especially for just the average layperson. So let's start off with a very basic, broad question. As again, I'm sure all people out there who watch this channel also know my perspectives. So really broadly. Is there a COVID-19 to start off the show today? Uh, I would say no, there's, there's definitely not a virus and there's not a new disease. So please elaborate on that. So in, in, regard, to, <laughs> in regard to not being a virus, right? So let's start there, right? So can you explain for people what that means, especially those out there that are probably already turning the channel off because that's been said, <laughs> even though that's quite ridiculous as we should be open-minded. So please elaborate for me. Yeah, sure. Well, there's, um, you know, a specific way that you need to design an experiment in order to be, to show that there's a virus that exists. And, uh, you know, it's been done uh, several times in lower organisms, like in bacteria or algae, where they've found what they call viruses. <clears throat> um, interestingly, uh, those are not actually thought to cause harm to those organisms, but may actually be a way to, to uh, help their survival when they're in a difficult uh, environment, like under a lot of stress. Um, but through those experiments, you can see that uh, you can basically take uh, the source of the virus, which you know in that case would be a mixture of those uh, bacteria cells and the, and the uh, bacteriophage particles, which are the, what they call a, um, a virus in bacteria, and they filter it. <clears throat> and filtering is a very powerful way to purify the virus particles because they're so much smaller than the cells. So for example, uh, they say that a virus particle is on the order of 100 nanometers, um, and uh, that's a billionth of a meter is one nanometer. So very, very tiny, the cells are much, much larger. So by putting them through a filter, which just has tiny pore sizes that only small things can fit through, you can separate it from the rest of the cells. And then once you have it purified, you can then characterize it. Uh, in other words, look at what the chemical composition or the structure of it is, and then you can extract any genetic material and characterize that. When they've done the experiments uh, claiming to isolate the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is uh, the name of the virus that they say is associated uh, with COVID-19, the disease, <clears throat> they don't follow that procedure at all. They, in fact, don't purify any virus particle during the entire experimental procedure. And you know this is a, a fundamental principle of science that if you want to measure a variable, you have to separate that variable from the other ones, right? So you design an experiment specifically where you separate that one variable. There's another uh, principle of research that they don't do called uh, a control. So you always have a control so that you know that whatever you're measuring is not present in the control. So it's like a negative uh, sample. So in order to show that there's a virus particle in these experiments, what they do is they take the fluid from the patient, which has a mixture of a bunch of things, right? It's just lung fluid. So it's got, you know, sputum, it's got different kinds of cells. It's got genetic material like bacteria cells, human lung cells, immune cells. And they mix it with a foreign cell culture usually, <laughs> um, like uh, monkey kidney cells. And they incubate that and grow it in culture. And they also add antibiotics to that. And then after they grow it for several days or a week or more, they look at it under the microscope and they see little particles. But the thing is, we don't know the source of those particles at all. And we know uh, that when you mix cells in a culture with antibiotics that they make exosomes. And exosomes, I can explain what they are in more detail, but they basically look the same as virus particles are alleged to look. So when they look under the microscope, how do they know if they're seeing the exosomes, which you know are going to be there, or something else, which they're calling a virus? So if they just did a simple control experiment where they had the same cells with the antibiotics but didn't add the lung fluid to it, that would be the control experiment. And then they could show pictures of that and show the particles there and see how they look different from what they are calling the virus particles. But they've never done that, and I suspect the reason is because they would show the same exact particles 
uh, in that experiment. And then they would say, oh, well, we didn't find a virus. And that's not what they want to say, because the way you get famous as a scientist and the way you get more grants is that you write a paper which says you isolated a virus.